Is this a model you think that uh, can actually gather legs and walk in Uganda? Well, in other African countries? Well, we've seen in, in other parts of the world that popular protest can be effective and not just in Africa and the Middle East, as uh, Dr. Stubbs was saying, in the United States as well. Um, I think the critical point here is that people have basic inalienable rights to protest and to demonstrate peacefully. Um, the police have killed five people. I don't see any record of demonstrators having killed anybody. I don't think demonstrators have been carrying arms or clubs, but they've been beaten themselves. So I think the onus is very much on the police to demonstrate that it's professional, that it's upholding the rule of law, and it's also protecting people's rights. At the moment, we're not there. We don't have that environment in Uganda where people can feel safe to demonstrate. Any particular reason why, for example, you have the same problems, frankly, across the continent, and especially in neighboring Kenya? But the Kenyan authorities seem to have handled the situation differently. Well, we had serious problems after the last Kenyan elections, of course, where, the police, where the police were accused of serious crimes, and, mm. and, and the chief of police of Kenya is actually indicted by the ICC. That is correct. Um, He's one of the Ocampo Six. Yeah, yes. so um, I think it's not unique to Uganda, but um, perhaps I could point to a positive case or a positive example. When we saw the other day when um, Olaru Tunu exercised his right to walk to work, a policeman from Ginger Road accompanied him. But you know what happened to He got suspended, officer. but the, the one policeman who has behaved professionally <laughs> throughout this whole crisis, the whole situation, has been suspended. Um, that policeman should be congratulated for upholding the rule of law, protecting Olaru Otunu's rights, but also ensuring public safety.